Uh, we now move to Marcel Meyer, who is the Deputy Mayor of Samso, and the floor is yours, Marcel. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Marcel Meyer. I'm the Deputy Mayor of Samso, and uh, I was also here for a year and a half ago to sign the Pact of Islands uh, agreement. And uh, I regret to see that there aren't that many political representatives today, but I hope to see them again some other time in Brussels. Uh, and sh a short introduction on Samsu. For those of you who haven't visit our, visited our island, we're an island in the center of Denmark, uh, about 30 kilometers from north to south, 10 from east to west, 112 square kilometers. In uh, 1997, the Minister of Energy in Denmark made up a competition between islands. And the winner of the competition could call himself, uh, itself, a renewable energy island in Denmark. And Samsø was one of the competitors, together with other islands. And to win the, uh, the competition, we needed to make an energy action plan, an island energy action plan, just like you've been making in this uh, ILPACT program. We weren't the island in Denmark that was most ahead with renewable energy. There were other islands who had made bigger efforts in exchanging their energy sources to renewables. But we were chosen anyway because we resembled the average energy use in Danish regions. So we won the competition, and the man who made our island energy action plan moved to Samsø, and he started implementing some of his ideas. In his island energy action plan, he stated the goal that Samsø should be CO2 neutral in 10 years. And nobody believed that he would succeed in it, but he did anyway. To, uh, describe how he succeeded, you can uh, divide energy use on Samsø in 1998 in three different parts. One was, uh, one, the one is electricity production, there's heating, and there's transportation. To uh, produce electricity by renewables, we installed a lot of wind turbines. 10 wind turbines on land, now 11 wind turbines on land and 10 offshore. For heating, we made a lot of different district heating plants using renewables. Some use solar thermal energy, some use wood chips, a uh, few of them use straw. And the third uh, part is transportation, and in transportation, it, it uh, has appeared that it's very hard to change to renewables, or it has been for the last 10 years anyway. But if you take the whole picture, we are CO2 neutral anyway, or even we have a, a negative CO2 emission, because the, the energy we produce by our wind turbines is ex exported to the mainland, and thus our balancing the energy we use for transportation. In this uh, OWPACT program, um, we could have settled down and said, okay, we're CO2 neutral, but we wouldn't settle for that. So we made a new island energy program, a new island energy action plan. And in this action plan, we've stated seven objectives. The first objective is that we want to be fossil free uh, in a number of years. Now, as we already have a negative CO2 emission, it doesn't make any sense to, to have a goal that says we want to reduce CO2 emission by uh, any kind of percentage. So we want to banish instead all fossil fuels 
from Samsung. That's one of our goals. And it also reflects that our problems in changing to renewable sources mainly lie in the field of transportation. The second objective states that uh, the decentralized and flexible energy sy system for renewable energy production is maintained and further developed. This goal reflects that when we implemented renewable energy sources, we did it very decentralized. Our district heating plants are owned by local consumers, local constructors, or local energy distributors. Our wind turbines are owned by local farmers or different associations of local uh, shareholders. Also, our local municipality owns five wind, uh, wind turbines. So we are locally uh, based in our energy production. And the initiatives for changing to renewable energy are also come from the locals. Apart from that, different private households also have invested in renewable energy sources, changing oil burners to wood stoves or heating pumps or investing in PV uh, systems or solar thermal th systems. The third objective is that we want to, uh, that fuel for transportation on Samsu and to or from the island will be based on renewable energy. Like I said before, in the field of transportation, it showed that it was very hard to change to renewable energy. I think that's, uh, well, it, it has uh, different causes. For one thing, electrical cars or hydrogen cars are still more expensive than, than the traditional cars. Another thing is that if you buy an electrical car, it's, uh, it's a, the, the, the electrical cars that are available are small city cars, and we're an agricultural area. We're, we live in the country. People want a, a decent car, an ordinary car, that they can use as status symbol. So it's, 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 it's showed to be very hard. But we do some things uh, already, the things we can do. We have a project in the municipality where we want to change local trans public transport to electrical buses. We've, uh, we found the finance, finances for it and we hope to implement it in a couple of years. Our elderly care in the local municipality has uh, bought a number of electrical cars the cars have a radius of uh, 120 kilometers, and that's enough for them to drive around in the area, which belong to the, the different sectors in the elderly uh, care, to reach all the people that they have in their program. So we use electrical cars there. When we come to, uh, to ferries, uh, some of you already have mentioned that it, that's also a problem for us as an island if we want to change to renewables. The ferries we have at the moment uh, use diesel uh, for fuel. And as uh, Bertil said this morning, we, have, uh, we face already regulations in uh, 2015 that puts limits, uh, maximum limits, on the use of SOX uh, and NOX in, in the di diesel for the ferries. So we have to come up to, with some kind of solution. The ferry you see here uh, should have sailed to Samsu. At, for some reason, it didn't. At, it's too long a story to <coughs> tell here. But um, this ferry has a room. Has, uh, it, it's designed in a way that it can be changed to use uh, li liquid natural gas. And uh, we have to have a new bid for who is going to sail to Samsø uh, in the next uh, five to six years from the first October the 1st, 2014. And as a local municipality, we asked the ferry companies to come with an offer uh, on, with a price for what, is, what does it cost if you have to use diesel for sailing and what does it cost if you have to use liquid natural gas for sailing. And once we have changed the ferries to sail with liquid natural gas, 
we also can uh, change to biogas. So that's our uh, vision in, in sailing to and from the island. But of, of course, it's also a vision that will take a number of years to accomplish. Heating savings is another objective. Um, on Samsu, we have a lot of old houses. And we change the building mass about every 100 years. Now, the thing we did as a local municipality is we made regulations that at any time, our local building regulations should state that uh, housing should be 25% more energy effective than any national regulations. So we, all of the time, we try to stay ahead of the rest of the country. But of course, it will take some time before you can see the results because the building mass will exchange very slowly. What we do see is that as older people sell their houses and young families move in, uh, they redo houses and insulate them so they become much more energy effective. The fifth objective, to work for substantial savings on electricity consumption. Now, I often say if we can convince our children that they shouldn't use their PlayStation 3 or Xbox every day, but every other day, we could vastly reduce the emission of CO2. But that's not a feasible project, I think. So instead, we have to look for other things. But it does state that if, as we start using more and more electrical devices and digital devices, uh, there, there are some tendencies for that electricity consumption will rise instead of decrease. Our main focus in uh, electricity savings on Samsu will be in, use, in the use of pumps. Just to, to come with an example, uh, we are 3,817 inhabitants and we use 200,000 euro every year to pump sewage and rainwater across the island. Now, if we can exchange the pumps uh, that pump this water across the island by much more energy effective pumps, maybe we can uh, spare half of the money and half of the electricity. So that's one of the main focuses for the, next, for the coming next year. And uh, it's, as it is, as the project is, it is bankable already. The sixth objective, to seize opportunities as they arise, that is, is not really an objective of achieving a specific goal in renewable energy. It's more to state the SAMSO philosophy of working and becoming CO2 neutral. Um, maybe I'll come into it later in the roundtable discussion, but to come with an example, uh, the initiatives, among the initi initiatives of the Samsu project back in 98 were a lot of metal construction firms. And their idea, they were very eager to win the competition to become Renewable Energy Island because they thought if, if, we're, if we as Samsu become Renewable Energy Island, we can make a lot of money by producing and selling wind turbines. Now that was back in 1998. 98. Now we can see that in Denmark there are only two companies who produce wind turbines and both of them have, have more employees than we have inhabitants on Samsø. So of course the idea of producing wind turbines was a failure and they never got any success with it. But instead these metal companies had another, got another role. They weld the pipelines and produce the pipelines for our district heating plants. And so they, by being very flexible, they had success. And that's what we mean by stating that you have to take the opportunities as they are. It's very good to make an island energy action plan, but in a couple of years, you have to be flexible and change your goals along the way. 
The seventh objective, and the last one, to strengthen and establish partnerships. Now here I'd like to stress that although I'm the deputy mayor and a representative of our local municipality, much of the, the main actor in our energy pro projects is the energy agency integrated now in the energy academy. And this actor is mere as an association of local inhabitants and shareholders. So it's not the local municipality that is the main actor, but it's local private SMEs and uh, people who are very much, other people who are very much involved in changing energy sources to renewables. So we always try to coordinate our actions with local producers, local constructors, constructors and local consumers. And this is the, the best way of making sure that there is no local resistance to changing to renewables, and also the best way to make sure that the local SMEs are ben benefit from the actions that we're taking. Now finally, I've stated a lot of long-term goals. The short-term goals for our, our, in our energy action plan are pumps, like I said, uh, public buses, which have to switch to electricity, and uh, a biogas plant. We had a biogas plant on Samsu uh, once, but it closed down because it was connected to a pig farm and pig prices decreased, so our biogas plant was useless. But we want to reinvent biogas on Samsu, and that should be possible as well. As a final remark, now that this uh, ILPAC program is finished, I, uh, I would really very much like to see all of you in a couple of years, two or three years, to see what has become of your uh, energy action plans and to present once more what has become of our plans in the short term for the next couple of years. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marcel, for that presentation.